Hello, hello, everyone. This is Man United inside again on it. Welcome back. The Glazer family have done what everyone expected during Manchester United takeover process. It's the one year anniversary of the Glazers announcing they were exploring a possible sale of Man United. Joyous scenes of celebrations from Deansgate to Old Trafford were envisaged when the Glazers announced Manchester United was up for sale on the 22nd of November, 2022. The Glazers announced on that date they were exploring strategic opportunities for the club, which could include selling it and that gave supporters something they had craved, a glimpse of hope their ownership could end. Some dreamt of a quick transaction and speculated new owners could be in place by summer, then it emerged that Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani were in the race for the club. Sheikh Jassim's proposal was for 100% of United and Ratcliffe's wanted a majority stake. There were divisions in the fan base over which billionaire would be best, but the majority of matchgoers did not want Qatar. A takeover from Sheikh Jassim would have created uncomfortable questions and some fans would have walked away because same-sex relationships are illegal in Qatar and their treatment of migrant workers has been hideous. Amnesty International, the world's leading human rights organization, criticized a potential Qatari-led takeover of United and they claimed it would be a sports-washing project and a wake-up call to the Premier League. There have been exactly 12 months since the initial announcement that revealed the club was on the market and those uncomfortable conversations aren't going to be needed, to the relief of many supporters. Ratcliffe has prevailed in the race for the keys to Old Trafford, albeit for a minority stake at the club, and his breakthrough is imminent, which is a word that's been used far too often by pretenders throughout the process. It's been a grueling year to reach a breakthrough in the process and in truth, there have been minimal significant updates, but that hasn't stopped chancers on social media pretending to have inside knowledge. In the era of misinformation, social media has become a dangerous place and some fans who were desperate to hear positive news fell into the trap of believing takeover updates from accounts that have absolutely no merit. The Glazers made the situation worse by, rather unsurprisingly, not opening lines of communication throughout the process. They have always treated fans with contempt and they've stayed true to themselves. One of the most galling aspects of the Glazers' suffocating ownership is a refusal to communicate and true to form. They have spoken just a few words in public despite the uncertainty hanging over United and fans. Avram Glazer was tracked down by Sky News in Florida a day after the initial announcement but he remained tight-lipped, saying, as we announced yesterday, the board went through a process and it's decided it's going to look at different strategic alternatives. When asked why the club hadn't been sold earlier, he reiterated the American family was now considering its options. Mason Greenwood backed for Man Ut second chance, after return decision agreed. Manchester United have been urged to hand Mason Greenwood a second chance next season, once he completes his season-long loan at Getafe. Former Red Devils winger Ian Story Moore has backed Greenwood to resume his career at Old Trafford, despite the club's sudden U-turn in the summer. In February, the Crown Prosecution Service dropped charges of attempted rape, assault and controlling and coercive behavior against the 22-year-old forward, which he consistently denied. Following a six-month internal inquiry into his 2022 arrest, The Athletic reported that United Chief Executive Richard Arnold had informed staff of plans to reintegrate Greenwood. Football director John Murto and manager Eric Ten Hag reportedly supported the stance. However, staff threatening to strike an external criticism is claimed to have prompted a late U-turn. It led to Greenwood joining La Liga side Getafe on loan until next summer, by which point he will still have one year left on his United contract. The former United No. 11 is enjoying life in Spain and is gradually rediscovering the scoring touch that made him one of Europe's most exciting young attackers after his 2019 senior breakthrough. United's stance reportedly remains the same. They don't expect Greenwood to represent the club again at the end of his loan at Getafe and beyond. However, Story Moore believes he should remain at Old Trafford next season to add much-needed firepower to Ten Hag's misfiring, attacking regiment. Everybody deserves a second chance. He has served his time, so to speak, and they should possibly let him back in next season, Story Moore told Express Sport. He's an asset, isn't he? 
I think he's better than what they've got when he's at his best, absolutely. Marcus Rashford's strike in a 3-1 defeat at Arsenal in September remains the only Premier League goal scored by a United forward this season. Ten Hag's side have scored just 13 goals in 12 league outings this term, a measly tally only six teams have failed to match. Rashford is out of sorts, Anthony continues to underwhelm and Jadon Sancho remains banished after effectively calling Ten Hag a liar on social media earlier in the season. Greenwood would no doubt boost the Dutchman's attacking options. But you needed Zincoming Ineo's regime would face the same internal and external resistance if they attempted to sanction his return next year. Jaden Sancho makes final decision on Manud's exit plan after Sir Jim Ratcliffe steps in. Manchester United forward Jaden Sancho is unlikely to entertain transfer interest from Saudi Arabia, but it's still possible he could be sold once Sir Jim Ratcliffe takes charge. Manchester United outcast Jadon Sancho will not agree to join a club in Saudi Arabia once the transfer window reopens in January. The England winger, 23, has not made a single appearance for United since he called Eric Ten Hag out on social media after the Dutchman claimed Sancho had been omitted from the matchday squad against Arsenal in early September due to poor training performances. Ten Hag has subsequently banished Sancho from all first-team facilities following reports that the player was unwilling to apologize after the incident. And while it's expected both parties will try to move Sancho on in the new year, Sancho has no designs on entertaining interest from the Middle East. A new report from The Telegraph has outlined that Sancho is being targeted by his former club Borussia Dortmund and Juventus, while there is also interest from Saudi Arabia. His preference, though, is to continue his career in Europe rather than joining the Saudi Pro League. Sancho was the subject of interest from Saudi Arabia in the latter stages of the summer transfer window, but did not pursue a move. And it seems as though that stance has not softened even in light of his current situation at Old Trafford. Resolving the ongoing feud between Sancho and Ten Hag is likely to be a priority for Sir Jim Ratcliffe once his 1.3 billion proposal for a 25% stack in the club is ratified in the coming days. The Ineos chiefest are likely to entertain the idi of ostracizing a player how cost Manchester United Asam in excess of 73 million just two years ago, and reports have already claimed he will attempt to make Ten Hag and Sancho resolve their differences. While Ratcliffe may be keen to end their rift, it seems unlikely there will be any way back at Old Trafford for a player who has struggled to live up to expectations while Ten Hag remains in his post. It remains to be seen how much of the 73 bar meters fee United would recoup if they did sell...